Now, there's been a lot of debate around the world about ultra-processed foods. The consumer group, which says they make up around 60% of our diets. Well, there's no settled definition, but generally they contain ingredients not used in home cooking. But that's a wide range from ready meals and pot noodles to even sliced bread and oat milk. Well, some studies have suggested there's a link between ultra-processed food and poor health. Poor diet is now the leading cause of early death on planet Earth for human beings. The science is now really clear that the more ultra-processed food you eat, the higher your risk of early death, cancer, heart attacks, strokes, inflammatory diseases like Crohn's disease, metabolic disease like type 2 diabetes, mental health problems like anxiety and depression, and finally, and perhaps most worryingly of all, dementia. I never would have thought of this, but when you read this very long list of ingredients, it just makes you think much more deeply about like, what am I tasting? What are they trying to get me to taste and how does this all feel in my mouth? Grass is a pathway that many companies have used the vast majority of times as opposed to petitioning. Think about the last time you went grocery shopping. How much of your cart was filled with fresh, whole foods? And how much of it came in a box, a bag, or a can? Ultra-processed foods now make up over 70% of what's on our shelves and they're slowly becoming a dominant part of the American diet. They're convenient, affordable, but are they worth the risk to our health? Ultra-processed foods are the kinds of foods that you'd find in the middle aisle of a grocery store. They come in a box, they come in a can, they come in a bag, all right? They're made by out of a factory. Uh, they take raw ingredients and they combine them together and sometimes they extrude them. They form them into shapes that don't naturally occur in the whole food. And if you look at the ingredient label of ultra processed foods, and I encourage everybody who's shopping to look at that ingredient label, you'll start to see chemicals in there that you don't recognize. You can't pronounce them and you don't know what they do in there. What they're planning for your kitchen in 2025 will shock everyone. Crystal thought she was eating like everyone else, but what she didn't know was that those foods were feeding her sickness. I was unhealthy. I was overweight. I was actually pre-diabetic. It was a wake-up call. Let's get real for a second. Most of us don't think twice about grabbing a frozen pizza or a pack of chips after a long day. They're quick, they're easy, and they're cheap. But the reality is, these foods are packed with chemicals, additives, and substances we'd never allow in our kitchens. At the Chicago Food Expo, one of the largest food technology shows in the world, we got a sneak peek into the future of food, and let me tell you, it's a little unsettling. This expo is where science meets our plates, an event showcasing everything from plant-based meats to food with artificial flavors engineered to keep you coming back for more. And it's these amazing scientists use this wonderful technology to generate the foods that we see on our shelves in the mm -hmm. grocery stores and make really convenient products that are, you know, at least from a microbiological perspective, like pretty safe, right? Acutely, yeah. they don't cause us to, to get sick and they have long shelf life and don't require a lot of equipment and skill to prepare. A lot of what we're seeing here is about, as you say, shelf life, but a lot of it is, I mean, ultimately you don't have a business in, unless people want to buy more and more of your product. That's exactly right. So not only does it have to have those properties, they want to have repeat customers, right? Your, your product has to be tasty and delicious and convenient. Many of these folks are also trying to design new technologies to introduce things into these foods that might actually improve their health. The question is, we really need to understand what that does to our bodies over the long term and, yeah. and how it affects our health. It's amazing how much technology is now involved in the food we eat. At the Institute of Food Technologist Expo in Chicago, scientists are showing off the latest advancements in food processing. This isn't just about making food more convenient. It's about making it last longer on shelves and making sure you keep buying more. Wake up, people. This is not good. I'm going to switch from my normal healthy diet, it's pretty healthy, I eat about 20% ultra-processed food, to an 80% ultra-processed food diet. The rules of my experiment are that I eat whenever I feel hungry, which is what I always do. But previously, that meant eating three meals a day with the occasional snack. Now, I find myself craving food much more often. Here we're working with ingredients like structured pea protein and flavor enhancers that make food taste better with less salt or sugar. We're also looking at how to extend shelf life so the food stays fresher longer. But here's the thing. These foods aren't created just to nourish us. They're designed to be addictive. They're designed to make sure you keep reaching for that next bite. 
It's no coincidence that these ultra-processed foods dominate the shelves. They're profitable, and profit is what drives the food industry. Many companies behind the foods we consume are billion-dollar corporations. Their interests aren't in your health. They're in their bottom line. The U.S. is built on free markets, and when it comes to food, the bigger the company, the bigger the reach. From fast food chains to grocery store shelves, these corporations are focused on one thing, making money. What you're seeing is every part of life is being man-made. And the reason why is because you can't patent nature. You can patent anything you make man-made. When you make it patent, now I can make money. And at what cost? The health of the average American. Ultra-processed foods are not just about convenience. They're about control, corporate control over what we eat. These foods are packed with ingredients most of us can't even pronounce. And here's the scary part. Many of those additives aren't even tested for long-term safety. Artificial flavors, colorings, preservatives, emulsifiers, these chemicals are added to processed foods to improve taste, texture, and shelf life. If the herbs are for healing, when did it change from the herbs to a carcinogenic chemical? And why? I was arrested. Why was I arrested? Because of the same thing that probably Jesus was hung for, defending what is called righteousness. You could be right, but you could also be dead right. But do we know how they're really affecting our bodies? Not really, because in the U.S., companies can self-declare these ingredients as generally recognized as safe, or grass, without any oversight from the FDA. In the United States, there are over 10,000 food additives allowed. 10,000! Just let that sink in. In the European Union, just over 400. Countries like France and Denmark have outright banned several chemicals that are still widely used in the U.S. Why? because they put public health first, while here in America, profit comes first. How do we account for that disparity and how is it that some chemicals that are in our foods have long been banned elsewhere? Different societies have different degrees of tolerance for um, uncertainty and different laws that um, determine what the regulators can do as substances are added. America's a country that likes individual choice and mm. access in general. And I think our laws reflect that sort of national sen sentiment. Dr. Hall highlighted that. When you're consuming ultra-processed foods, you're not just eating empty calories. You're eating chemicals that can change how your body functions. They affect how you metabolize food, how your brain processes hunger, and ultimately, how much you eat. The science showed that there was something about these ultra-processed foods that caused people to overeat and gain weight. Now we're trying to figure out what is the mechanism because this category of ultra-processed food is very wide. And if we can figure out what the mechanisms are, then we can give some information about how to avoid them, how to reformulate potentially ultra-processed foods. But right now, we simply eat too much. The cost of ultra-processed foods goes far beyond what you pay at the checkout. Obesity, diabetes, heart disease, these are the real prices Americans are paying. Studies have shown that diets high in ultra-processed foods lead to an increased risk of chronic illnesses. She actually had to have a neuro neurological consult because she felt the tingling and the different sensations, and it was all linked to uh, pre-diabetes. So it, um, it was a wake-up call, but um, she took the challenge to do, to do better. So how has your health changed since you've made these dietary changes? It has changed um, drastically. I lost around like 50 pounds. 50 pounds? Mm -hmm. So reason number one, processed foods are so dangerous. I mentioned it before because all of the nutrients have been ripped out of it. This is why when you look on the front of the box, it'll say enrich with, enhanced by. And then they'll have these lists of maybe vitamins or minerals or what have you. It's important you know those vitamins and minerals are unnatural, they're synthetic. They don't come from a natural place. And the reason why it's had to be enriched is because it was made poor through the processing, okay? All right, through taking that natural food and processing it so that it would last a long time on the shelf, all right? And they do that by adding a, a, a whole list. In Europe, food safety regulations are much stricter. Take the example of trans fats, once commonly used in processed foods to extend shelf life. In 2004, Denmark became the first country in the world to ban trans fats. This move saved thousands of lives, reducing heart disease across the country. But in the U.S., 
Trans fats weren't phased out until over a decade later. Why? Because corporate food giants lobbied against it, slowing down regulations. In countries like France, companies are required to label food additives clearly, and many chemicals we find in our foods are outright banned. Thousands of, of substances have entered the food supply during that, using that mechanism. Um, and again, FDA can always afterwards say something is no longer generally recognized as safe. They've done that with um, artificial trans fat or partially hydrogenated oils. But there's so many substances that, you know, it really is, I think, challenging given the resources FDA has to really be on top of that all the time. The truth is, big food companies spend millions of dollars lobbying Congress to protect their profits. They don't want stricter regulations because it would hurt their bottom line. In the end, it's all about making more money, even if it means risking the health of millions of Americans. The Environmental Working Group, a nonprofit, found of nearly 800 food chemicals introduced between 2000 and 2021, 99% of them avoided FDA scrutiny using the grass designation. But the number is likely even higher. It doesn't include the unreported declarations. Senator Sanders sounded the alarm by pointing out that we've allowed these corporations to run wild, prioritizing profits over people. It's no different from what we saw with big tobacco years ago. Food giants are deliberately misleading the public, marketing products as healthy while knowing full well they're contributing to an epidemic of obesity and disease. We've got an epidemic, and that epidemic of uh, obesity and, and kids being overweight absolutely leads to a radical increase in the number of people with diabetes. And it's not only diabetes, it's other related illnesses. So keeping kids healthy and away from ultra processed food, unhealthy food, enormously important for the well-being of our people. From 2009 to 2018, the food industry spent over $500 million on lobbying efforts. They're not fighting for better health. They're fighting for better profits. And it's working. The U.S. government has allowed these companies to dictate what's in our food at the expense of public health. While regulators struggle to keep up, communities are stepping in to help. Across the country, local programs are working to make whole foods more accessible. It's all about education, affordability, and making healthier choices available to families. The question is, are we willing to pay that cost? Or is it time to take a stand for ourselves and our families? Change won't happen overnight. But every small step we take matters. Start by making some small changes today. Swap out just one ultra-processed meal for something fresh and whole. And if you care about the future of food safety, speak up. Advocate for stronger regulations that protect our health. Share this video, subscribe for more, and let's start making a change one meal at a time.